She's a woman working in a very male-dominated industry, running two business groups of Dow Chemical that combined do billions of dollars in revenue each year. Kim Ann Mink joins me to talk about her journey to become president for the chemical company's Elastomers and Electrical and Telecommunications Divisions, and how she's empowering women through STEM education. Kim Ann, welcome. Thank you Thank so much you for being so here. Much. So it seems like you have been just kind of immersed in the in the world of science from a very young age. You graduated with a degree in chemistry, mm -hmm. later a PhD in analytical chemistry, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and then, so now, now you're at Dow Chemical. Um, what got you interested in the science field? As a young girl in second grade, I tell this story, um, my teacher had given us an art project where the students in the class had to decide what they wanted to be when mm -hmm. they grew up. And they had to make a 3D replica of themselves out of a milk container. Uh, that's depict, hard. That, that's hard. And depicting uh, what their career choice was. And I tell you, Victoria, if you saw what I had made, you would realize why I'm not an artist. <laughs> uh, but what you would see is I transformed the milk container into a little girl with a white lab coat on and with high heels and pearls, of no less. Of course. <laughs> um, holding a test tube with black smoke coming out of it. And um, I was very proud of myself because not only was I not the I was the only little girl in the class who had chosen science as a profession, but I was the only student out of the entire class. And I was very proud. So yeah. as I basked in my uniqueness, this little boy sitting next to me said, and I quote, and this is the God's honest truth, little girls can't be scientists. Wow. So at a Ripe old age of eight years old, I learned that having a goal sort of laced with that uh, resilience and determination, never giving up that goal, is just as important a variable in the success equation than one's capability. So I never looked back wow. and I continued. That's amazing. You lead two very technical divisions, I guess, of Dow. Yes. Um, how do you manage the kind of science aspect and the business money-making aspect, you know, leading that to those divisions? How do you do that and, and be successful And be at successful. Both? My PhD really did teach me on how to look at things from a business perspective and how to solve problems, how to bring solutions to the table. Mm -hmm. I was very fortunate because when I did um, uh, voice uh, my, my um, interest in going into the business side and I would tell you Victoria 20 years ago my colleagues in the R&D department thought I was going over to the dark side <laughs> but because I had a vision it wasn't very dark at all yeah. for me. Your business is a, a pretty male dominated industry right and that little boy going all the way back to when you're eight years old um, can you pinpoint a time did you ever feel like you didn't belong in the industry or when you were intimidated to kind of take the next step? The thing that I needed to do was really focusing on that internal work to really uh, build a sense of self, that authenticity, and realizing you're never, ever going to give that up, and nor should you. Mm -hmm. So I started with that. I wasn't going to change. I was going to be me. At the beginning of October, you were added to a list of 100 diverse corporate leaders in yes. STEM, and that's um, science, technology, engineering, and math. Yes. Um, so talk to me a little bit about the work you do there and why you think it's important, I guess, to ha help incorporate women into, into these fields. Yeah, that's great. Great question. Focusing on investing of STEM education is very, very important for building and sustaining a STEM workforce. Right. And that's very, very important. So I, you know, if you kind of look at the data, Victoria, uh, the STEM area is, is the second fastest growing occupational group, only second to healthcare. That's incredible. Isn't I, that incredible? Yes, I don't feel like it's not always been that way, right? No, it hasn't. So you can imagine then that data shows us, and, and the growth we see, we're going to see that also. increase 26% between 2010 and 2020. That's incredible. So that tells us that there's working. going to be great job opportunities. Right. Now, while there's great job opportunities, you've got to get the people interested right. in it. Mm -hmm. So what we really try to do, we try to start when, the, when children are young, okay? And you try to get them interested. You, you want them to get excited about STEM topics. And your hope is that when students go off to college, they pick STEM majors. What's been the biggest lesson that you've learned throughout your more than two decades of experience in this industry? Going back to that authenticity. Never, ever, I, you know, I, I, I often call myself a chameleon. I've had to adjust through changing times. I've had to adjust through changing um, issues in the industry. But I learned that as long as you are true to yourself 
I think you can be successful mm -hmm. in anything. Well, you've been true to yourself. I know you have your pearls on today, just like you <laughs> predicted you would. That's right. Come on, thank you so much for thank being here. Thank you so it. much. It's been a pleasure.